The Big Ten agreed, agreed to close their investigation. It is resolved now. Harbaugh gets a three-game suspension, of which he's already served 33% of that. He was not there for Penn State. That's their second toughest game of the year. He won't be there this weekend for Maryland. They should probably win. And then he'll be off the sideline for Ohio State. be much better to have him. That's a real team. But this idea that the punishment from the Big Ten was going to be severe, punitive, was laughable. Everything in life is negotiable. Oh, oh, way more than you think. You and your wife negotiate things. You and your kids do. The Big Ten didn't want to get into a lawsuit with Michigan, especially Michigan. It's basically Ohio State with more esteemed academics. There is no proof, by the way, that Harbaugh knew. I know, I know, Buckeye fans, you're sure he did. But I defended Buckeye fans when everybody said they were sure Ryan Day turned in Harbaugh. And I said, no, he didn't. I suspect it's an inside job because head coaches in college football are highly compensated and often polarizing. And I was right. So don't rush to think Harbaugh knew internet sleuths. If the Big Ten thought he did, the action, the punishment would have been more severe. The NCAA will step in eventually. I suppose it'll be after the season and hand down something that will be like scholarship limits or a suspension again. It should be noted, Michigan's never lost when Harbaugh's not on the sidelines. A great indication of how well the program is run. Is it fair? Is it reasonable? Well, you and I may differ in opinion. I do not think advanced scouting, which is called cheating, was deciding games. Ohio State for years and years crushed everybody in this conference, including Michigan. Why? Better coaches, better players. And Michigan for years and years has crushed everybody in this conference except Ohio State because they got a better coach and better players. But in the last two years, Michigan got a really good quarterback. So they even crushed Ohio State. And Buckeye fans believe that is just because of the cheating. It's not because Harbaugh, who got to a Super Bowl, is a better coach than Ryan Day, which he is. Or that he has a better, better game plan the last two years. Or they're more a physical football team the last two years than Ohio State, which has gotten increasingly finesse over the last three years. Very receiver-dominant, receiver-dependent. But guess what? We're going to find out if you're right or I'm right in eight days because that's when Ohio State goes to Michigan and plays. And if Ohio State, now with all that dreadful cheating, hammers Michigan, well, I guess I was wrong. Guess I'll be wrong. But let me ask you a question, Buckeye fans. You've lost two straight, been humiliated, even with C.J. Stroud. What if Michigan humiliates you again? Won't be any cheating. Won't even be Harbaugh. We're going to make fun of you. Because you were outraged, absolutely outraged, and absolutely sure were those Michigan fans that Ryan Day turned him in. And I said, I don't believe that's true. I defended you, and I was right. And I think I'm right here. But don't celebrate too loudly on Harbaugh missing that game on the sidelines. Because if Michigan rolls Ohio State in eight days without the cheating in Harbaugh, (laughs) that's embarrassing. They will officially own Ohio. Celebrate today. Pump your fist today. Go to Reddit boards today. I'm sure there's a Buckeye site. You're declaring victory. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. And in eight days, we will have a conclusion. But I don't believe Michigan's been thumping Ohio State the last two years because they're cheating. I think Jim Harbaugh's career illustrates without question that when he gets an NFL quarterback or a top quarterback, he goes from beating people to thumping everybody. Ask Aaron Rodgers, who got worked by Kaepernick. And not for a power outage, he may have won a Super Bowl. Go ask USC, where Pete Carroll confronted Harbaugh at midfield in the middle of his dynasty. Said, what's the deal? Jim said, hey, I'm just competing. They humiliated USC and Pete Carroll, the dynasty out west, the last one. So in eight days, we're going to have a conclusion here. 
But Ohio State, be careful about the celebration. Because if they roll you again, can't blame cheating, and no Harbaugh on the sidelines will illustrate just how far Michigan has pulled away from Ohio State. I can't wait. Maybe wrong, but that's why sports is great. AFC hit on a bunch of great quarterbacks in the draft, about seven of them. And uh, the AFC is better than the NFC, and that's what I watched last night. Two really good football teams falling apart physically. But proof that the AFC is better than the NFC is that Josh Allen is 5-5, five and five, Joe Burrow is 5-5, five and five, and Justin Herbert's 4-5, and five, and even Peyton and Russell Wilson are 4-5. and five. <laughs> Pretty good quarterbacks. Joe Burrow's instability, his inability uh, to stay healthy in September, uh, is probably going to cost Cincinnati that I had picked to win the division. Attrition may just decide the AFC. The NFC is different. San Francisco and Philly have better players than everybody else, and everybody can see it. Detroit's kind of close. It's got better players. But in the NFC, Geno Smith, Josh Dobbs, Derek Carr, they're all playoff quarterbacks today. You can get away with it. A flawed team and a flawed quarterback. Uh, I mean, think about Baltimore. Mark Andrews, Pro Bowl tight end gets hurt. OBJ gets hurt. Lamar Jackson gets hurt late in the game. They were also missing their top running back, top offensive tackle, top cornerback, the Ravens are absolutely, once again, hanging by a thread physically. Thank God they have Lamar Jackson. But what I was watching were two very excellent teams capable of getting to the AFC Championship. And my guess is whoever's healthy late in the year wins. But what Lamar Jackson's able to pull off, Mark Andrews, a top three tight end. They already lost their top running back. Ronnie Stanley's a Pro Bowl left tackle. OBJ gets banged up fourth quarter. Um, it's different. In the, in the NFC, the Niners lose three straight. Eh. eh, nobody cares. Vikings awful in September, lose their quarterback. Eh, they've won five straight. Cowboys got worked by the Cardinals and the Niners, humiliated by both in a three-week stretch. Eh, doesn't really matter. You're allowed to rebound. You're allowed to go in a slump. You're allowed to go on a long losing streak. You're just not in the AFC. Those are excellent teams last night with excellent quarterbacks. Baltimore is falling apart. It's an annual tradition, but it's Burroughs injury. Uh, you cross your fingers on it. He, he's a great player, but it, it may just be his inability to stay healthy this year. Eventually, as good as he is in the AFC, costs him. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.